Okay. Could I forget he's doing this? God has a beautiful relationship with him. He died to save you from the consequences of your sin, and he has made a way possible for you to be made sinless before him, so you can enter the kingdom of heaven. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and 9, My eyes have seen, your ear has heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those that love him. <laughs> we are so seeing the Bible that God makes it clear that we all know that he exists. Romans 1 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. What we see in this creation shows that God is real. What we see in creation is the creation is made by an intelligent designer, and that's the one that gives us All people who ever live have an unseen enemy, that is the devil, and he doesn't want you to fear God, but he hates God. <laughs> Romans 1 20. Romans 1 20. Romans 1 20. Romans 1 The devil hates you, but God loves you. And you're special to God, but the devil will never be special to God, and he'll never have a chance to get into heaven because we sinned against God to the point that he can have no redemption. But we have a chance to be saved and enter the kingdom of heaven through Jesus Christ. Save us, dear. Romans 1, 1 to 5 says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And Revelation describes Jesus as the Almighty God. Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also will pierce him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. This is Jesus speaking. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So the good news is, if we believe that Jesus is God, we can get into heaven. God's Spirit is working in your heart to show you God's free gift of eternal life, but not of work. The same way you know it's a free gift, you can't earn it. God is offering you the gift of eternal life to Himself. Jesus' death is enough to pay for all of our life's other sins. All we need to do is be saved to get into heaven is to believe that Jesus died and raised again on the third day. I trust that the sacrifice pays for all our sins and you shall be saved. Sin is lying and stealing, murder. That's what we hate someone in our heart. That's murder. God said that's murder. So God's love. Um, we have we have none of us to get God's love. We're both in the same commandments, and we all need we all need to one day. But the good news is, if we put our trust in Jesus, we can have eternal life. Through Him. Trust you, God, and He'll Himself give us life. This life and its pleasures don't last forever. But those who believe in God will be filled by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. And we have Bibles and some free things here. If anyone would like a Bible, I've got a Bible here if you want one to pay. Um, we should become more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. What is seen as temporary, but what is not seen as eternal. Meaning that what we see at the moment isn't going to go on forever, that we'll soon end up in either heaven or hell, depending on the choice you make, on whether you believe us. And God is wishing that no man should perish, but that all should come to repentance and put their trust in him. So I'm going to read now about the gap between us and God. There is a gap between God and man, but the good news is Jesus bridged the gap. Let cross this gap. Then they all sinned against God by breaking his tent of armor. A separation happened, and we all say now God physically due to our sin. Jesus was born in flesh and suffered a full death to reconcile back to God. Jesus is the invisible image, it's a visible image of the invisible God. So people saw Jesus, over 500 people saw Jesus Christ after he rose from the dead, and there's plenty of other evidence for Jesus Christ existing. And all you need to do to enter heaven is just believe on him and you'll be saved right now today, and you won't perish on the day of judgment. So when your body will die, you will go on to be with God. And he also tells us, never leave us, nor forsake us, and that he will be with us through all of our troubles and tribulations in this world. He said, come unto me, all ye who are of heavy nations, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for a meek and lowly of heart, and shall, you shall find rest for your souls. To know heaven is to go to Jesus. He is the door in 
comes to world, that's your way to pass. Some of the gems of the glass of the world. So, we're here to talk to anybody if you want to hear any more about who Jesus Christ is and about how you can get saved and have eternal life. So, you can clone him yourself. You do. If you die without Jesus, you'll perish. Amen. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm going to read some from the Bible today. See what we have in the Bible. We can read to you. To encourage them, if you want to hear some good news today, this is from the Word of God. This is about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. The Holy Spirit will lead you away from danger. And the Holy Spirit will lead you to heaven, to repentance. So, the Bible says, These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present of you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father has said in my name, you will teach you all things, and bring all things to remembrance, whatsoever I have said to you. So even when you feel alone, that Jesus will encourage you in the prayer at times of your life, when you're struggling through things, he'll give you courage and strength for his word. So we can see when we go what's happening in the world, we don't have to worry because we know that God is in control. Even though we will see things that will get worse in this world because there is tribulation coming. And uh, it will be seven years of God's wrath upon the earth where he will uh, punish sin. And uh, there will be a chance to repent then, but you might end up not being living your life for it in those days. So today is a day to repent and trust in Jesus Christ. And we get saved not by work, so we can't earn our way in heaven. We get saved purely by what Jesus did. So, if it's a gift, if someone gives you a gift, it's free. You don't have to pay for it. You just accept that gift, and it's yours. And that's what Jesus says to do today. And he's offering you salvation, and it's free. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to go to church to have it. You don't have to earn it by good works, which is fine. You just get to know him, and that's all he really is, and you'll be saved. So that's Good news for us all. For the Bible says in Revelation, this is who Jesus Christ is. I am the Alpha, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and is to come, the Almighty. So God is the Almighty and he will be returning for his people. So all you need to do, it doesn't matter who you are, you're going to whoever you are, it doesn't matter how the world treated you, God knows you and he's not against you, he's for you. So in the quietness of your home at night, when you go to bed, you think about why you're here and the purpose is to God loves you and God made you here for a reason. So you can use your gifts and your talents to serve Him. The people who are on the outside of heaven, fearful, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, warmongers, murderers, and idolaters will arise, have their heart, and they can fire, which they have been to the second death. And we will go physically, and that's due to sin, because the wages of sin is death. But the previous of those is eternal life to anyone who believes in him. The second death is for those who haven't put their trust in Jesus Christ, and you will just go on and on for eternity in death, and you'll never, ever, ever be a God. And God doesn't want that for you, he wants you to believe on him and trust in him. And he wants you to know him. Because he's the one who creates you and knit you together in your mother's womb. 139, Psalm 139. So I'm thinking in 139. So I'm thinking you for a person and you'll be at this time in life for a person and for a reason. Because God wants you to work for him as well. He wants you to be here and have work for him. He wants you to live for him, not for yourself. Most of us want to live for ourselves because we're flesh. So we want us to serve him and seek him. Psalm <laughs> 316, the cross of the world. He gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. All you've got to do is believe in Jesus and you'll have everlasting life. That's a pretty good deal, considering we didn't earn it. That's a pretty good deal. I mean, his life in exchange for yours, that's what he's saying. He's saying, I'll give you my righteousness in exchange for your sin. So God's offering to take your sin, all the things you've done wrong before God, take them away from you, and put his righteousness on you. So when you stand before God, you stand there righteous before him. And that's what he's saying. He's saying, I'll give you my righteousness, and you'll have 
I pledge to never see you fall and to place me to your praise for God. That is because of Jesus dying for you, and it's not because he was punishing you, but because he loves you. And Jesus loves you and died for you. And only you, if you were the only person in the world, Jesus would have died just for you. He would have come and died just for you. And that's how much he loves us individually and he says in the Bible that he calls you by name and he's got your name a new name written for those who believe on him and the right to know so we look at the story of Zacchaeus Zacchaeus was a rich man who went around stealing from people and taking their money he was um, known by people as not a very nice man and when Jesus came along he went up to Jesus and he spoke to him, and everyone was like, oh, what's that noble person talking to Jesus? Why are we talking to God? Because they all thought, how hard was he was? But, Jesus didn't turn him away, despite the fact that he'd sinned. Jesus said, let me come and eat with you. And Zacchaeus took him back to his house, they prepared a meal. And in that time, Zacchaeus repented of all he'd done wrong, and he changed his name. He's not familiar, which means to change your mind. He changed his faith and he turned God. And because he did that, he was saved from all his sins he's done in the past. So the point that you turn to God and get saved from your sin is the point that all your past sin is washed away. And then any other sin that you commit, because we all have sin, we're in the body of sin, we're in the body of sin. As soon as you believe in him, all your sins are covered forever. And you never have to pay for any sin in hell. And a lot of us will think, oh, I deserve to suffer for what I've done. Well, you can continue to have that attitude, or you can reach out and grab the hand of the lifeboat and carry the Savior from the river where you're drowning. And you can reach out and grab the hand of the Savior and say, I don't want to drown in my sin, I want to go to heaven. I'm God is just the proud of his grace to the humble. So if we humble ourselves and admit that we've sinned against God, he'll forgive us. He's just looking for you to agree with him. That's all God wants is for you to agree with him that you sin and that you need salvation. And as soon as you do that and you trust in him, you'll be sealed and you will never ever have to fear death again. Because even though we die physically, you will not die spiritually. The second death will have no place over you. And then you go through the valley of the shadow of death. You don't have to fear me, but God is with you. And we all will go through that valley of the shadow of death. We're all going to die eventually, one day, for one thing or another. Or if you're very, very blessed, which would be amazing, you might get taken out on the church day of that church, which is coming to the church. We know she's saved now. But not necessarily. Because we don't know how long that is. We don't know exactly the day that I have Jesus Christ is returning, but we know that Jesus is returning. And we believe, and the more we get people saying online, especially on YouTube and TikTok, how much God is real, the more you get that, the more you realize just how real God actually is. Because you don't come against someone who's imaginary, so it's like an imaginary person. People don't against God because he is real. Thank you. 
sorrows and come to the kids. And we did but we him as it were our faces from him. He was despised and seen not. Surely he had turned no grief and carried our sorrows, that we were stricken him, smitten of God and afflicted. That he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of peace was put upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. So even though we were hated Jesus, he still healed them, he still died for us, and he still loved them. And that's you and me and all of us, even though we do basically God against him, like when we see each other in the dead state, don't feel that in our conscience we go, oh, I should do it, but we've done it anyway, because we follow, we disobey God, and that's what's in it, when we go against our conscience and just say, God, God, oh, praise the Lord God, and we all need Jesus to be healed. And then when we do, once you get Jesus, he'll never leave you. Once you, once you belong to him, he'll never leave you. And the world will hate you, because you're not our friend. It will hate you. You'll get mocked, you'll get hated. You'll get rejected. You'll never get out and speak about him. You'll never get hated for that as well. So you know it says, Blessed are you when you're persecuted for my name's sake, for great is your reward in heaven. And I pray that you're not going to in heaven. Then down here on the earth, where moth and rust don't destroy. And it's good to have a lot of money. <clears throat> I work for a company that makes a lot of money. I have the potential to make a lot of money, but I choose not to make a lot of money through the business, which is a very good business and good for people to listen to it. Um, but I don't get rich and I don't get greedy because they know that riches are the snare. And once you have all the money you want in the world, what have you got then? Once you've got all the money you need, all the wealth you need in the world, what have you got then? You've got a comfortable life, but then not. Then not. Does that fulfill your desire to know Jesus is God, your purpose, and have a relationship with God and created you? In fact, Jesus said that we should give our riches to the poor. He said we should give money to the poor, except the poor was in the flowing. Of course, you see a lot of things going on with the government and everything else, and we're going to get into that, but you know, there's a lot of things going on where people are going to struggle. And God will provide for people. He will always provide for people. But there's always going to be a struggle because Jesus said it was, because we're in a fallen world. But the good news is we're not going to be here forever. And the joy is knowing that when we leave the study, we're going to see Jesus Christ. And we're going to see him. And we're going to be like him. And we're going to have a resurrection body. And we'll be serving God in heaven. And we won't be sleeping. We won't eat people. We'll be in bodies that won't need to sleep. And we won't need to, we will eat, we won't need to eat. And Jesus himself will lead us on adventures every day. That's what the Bible says, the land shall be their light, he shall be the light of the city. So we have the sun shine at day and we have the moon at night. But the Lord will be the light of the city. And all of you, will, everybody will see Jesus. Everybody will see Jesus. Even the mockers and the scoffers of these last days will see Jesus. We'll all see Jesus. And the Bible says that when you see people scoff and mock of his existence, we're nearly there. We're nearly at the end. Praise the Lord. So, we encourage you today to read the Bible and seek God while he may be found and call upon him while he's near. And to say to sin. You're going to sin, we all will. But if you trust in Jesus, you'll have eternal life and you'll never, ever, ever have to worry again about where you're going to go when you die. You won't have to have fear in death because you'll know where you're going. I don't know my mum's in heaven with Jesus right now because it says in the Bible to be absent from the body, she's having a look, she's going to keep saying that, so it's going to be out of COVID. And sometimes I still know that I've like, seen her walking around, but I know it's not her, it's just me remembering her and knowing that I'll see her in heaven. So I don't really communicate with the dead. They believe that God is alive, and we can communicate with God because He's living. And He's there for anyone. Any time of the day, any time of the day, just call on Him and He'll save you. So if you find yourself in a really bad situation, you're near death, and no one else is around, call on Jesus. Because He's the name that saves. He's the only name given to Him by which now must be saved. And get to know Him. Get to know Him. He's amazing. He's better than the pleasure that the world has got for us. Although our flesh tells us differently. In the Lord, I put my trust. Amen. Uh, in the book of Genesis, the type of power we were made by God. And Adam and Eve sin, and because of Adam and Eve's sin, we all die physically. 
We weren't meant to go physically, but because Adam and Eve disobeyed God, sin came into the world. Adam was the first, because of Adam, we all sin, we all die. But the life giving spirit, the second Adam, is Jesus Christ. And Jesus came to give us back the life that was stolen from us at the very beginning when the devil was in his and others. And if you turn to God today, you will listen. You're caught, you're, he's waiting to hear from you. And you have you do have trouble, but never really easy to do So it is gonna be the narrow way, but it is the true way. And you might lose friends. You might lose family. You never know, so you don't want to be friends with you anymore. But that's the price you pay for following the world. And Jesus even said we would lose friends and family for following him. But I'd rather go to heaven because of Jesus who created me and go up in hell and go my friends who hate me. Anyway, God bless you, Wilma. I hope you try to get some things in your heart of the truth about God and that you really consider God's will and uh, why you need Him so much. Because we've got more looking for hope and it's found in Jesus, or hope is in Jesus. That's where you're going to find your hope. And the person who loves you, lover of your soul, Jesus said, I am the lover of your soul. Yeah, and he said, in my father's mansion, house of many mansions, if it were not, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. If I go, I would set a place for you, I will come again and receive you myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And when do I know you know, and the way you know? But Jesus is actually preparing already a place for us in heaven. He went up and he did, when he left, he went up and he turned it back to heaven. So I actually started to pray the place for us in heaven. Amen. Oh, is it finished? No, all got loads of messages. Hi, everybody. <laughs> God bless you. We're just down um, preaching the word of God in Bournemouth. Thank you for following us. So, in this world, there are many different people finding different ways to get to heaven, and uh, the Bible says very clearly in Galatians and also 1 Corinthians, and we've already established that God wrote the Bible, so he, he's the one who created the universe, and he has his final say on everything, not us, in his creation, not the creator, although we can create things. In Galatians it says very clearly that though, though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you that we have which we have preached unto you that in your head. So it goes very clear that if somebody tries to take you away from him by preaching to you something that isn't the way into heaven, they're gonna be in big trouble. So if someone's telling you there's any other way to get into heaven other than Jesus Christ and who Jesus Christ is, then they're then they're wrong and they're, they're gonna be in trouble with the Lord. So we want to make sure that you know the truth that you set free. And in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, it also says that people are free sharing a false Jesus, the false gospel, the false prophet. So, to know God is to read the Bible, to know the word, and to know the truth. And it's very clear that the Bible says that there's many different ways to get to heaven. And there's many different ways to get to heaven. And there's many different ways to get to heaven. And there's many different ways to get to heaven. And there's many different ways to get to heaven. And there's many different ways to get to heaven. And there's many different ways to get to heaven. And there's many different ways to get to heaven. And there's many different ways to get to heaven. But God has a hope for you to put the cross in him. God is offering you eternal life. And every sin you've ever done, every time you've ever felt shame or guilt, uh, when people have made you feel uh, less, than, less than who you really are, you just remember that God doesn't see you like that. If you read the word of God, he says, you're fearfully a woman today. And he said, he let you to your mother's room and he said, the man with it. If God didn't love you, why would he come down and die for you? Why would he create you and design you? He didn't love you and send you here. So, if you want me to not be alive to a call now, or hate you by people, whatever those people you've seen in dark, in school, maybe even bullied at school, for being overweight, or something like that, I know I was, I was a school, I was really terribly. Um, but if you want to be alive to a call now, or hate you by people, whatever those people you've seen in dark, in school, maybe even bullied at school, for being overweight, or something like that, I know I was, I was a school, I was really terribly. 
that first bit of one. How do I do Okay, I've got it, but... It's alive! Okay. <laughs> that first bit of one. How do I do that? How do I do that?